Hey YouTube, Mark here. I'm standing in my kitchen ready to make a cooking video today. Um, and actually this is a, a, a multi-day uh, event because what I'm making is I'm making lefse. Now if you don't know what lefse is, it's um, it's basically like a, uh, a potato tortilla. Instead of using corn or flour to make a tortilla, we're using potatoes, okay? And this recipe is something I got from my grandmother. When I was growing up, she'd always make them from fresh russet potatoes. But over the years and her experience, she's learned how to actually use potato flakes. You know, like the Idaho spud potato flakes. And uh, she actually made the recipe for me to use potato flakes. This is awesome. I like it. I, you know, I don't have to boil potatoes for a few hours and let them cool down in order to make the rest of it. So here we go. We're going to make lefse from potato flakes all right let me show you what uh, the ingredients are all right to start we need our potato flakes four cups of flakes and keep in mind that what i'm doing the ratios i'm using is not what you're going to find on the box okay so just roll with me here four cups of potato flakes two cups of milk two cups of water one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and four tablespoons of butter. You will also need two cups of flour, but that's later in the process. For now, we're just gonna worry about that stuff. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, turn my temperature on high. Add the milk the water, the salt, the sugar, and the butter. All right, now I just gotta wait for this to come up to a boil. Okay, it's almost to the boil. All right, it's about ready to boil. You can tell because a lot of the uh, foamy stuff has come up to the surface now. All right, so here we go, it's starting to boil. I'm gonna pick it up off the heat kill the heat on the burner and then I'm going to add the potato flakes and I'm going to get them stirred in basically just stir it until you don't see any dry stuff anymore you don't want to overbeat this I think this is actually looking pretty good as you can see the potatoes look kind of dry but that's actually what we were wanting so this looks good now I'm just going to let this sit on the counter and cool for a little bit because then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it set up overnight. I don't know the real reason on why the potato has to cool down. So, I mean, I understand. I don't want to work with the hot potato, but I'm not sure exactly why my grandmother's notes are saying that you know refrigeration overnight is preferable. I don't know if there's something going on with the potato starches or, you know, I, that's the only thing I can think of because, you know, once it's completely cooled down, it's almost like a brick. I mean, it, it's dense and it's uh, quite compact, but I truthfully don't know the real reason for it. But yeah, so right now I've got it sitting on the stove, just covered with a paper towel. You can also use just a, a dishcloth or whatever. So just make sure it's clean. I don't want, uh, you know, dust or anything falling into it. That's the only reason why it's covered. Um, so yeah, once that's cooled down enough, I'm going to actually stick it in the refrigerator and wait until tomorrow. Alright, I just want to show you a, a few of the things that you're, we're going to do once the dough is finally finished up. This is what we're going to roll out on, okay? This is just a, uh, a round disc. Um, these are actually made specifically for Lefsa, and on the back of it, it actually has the directions. And on this one, it has grandmother handwriting that says not to use this one because it got warped. I don't know how exactly, I'm thinking it just got wet. But you cannot use this one for rolling because it's warped, but for the video I'm just going to show you um, what it does. So this gives you a nice flat surface that you can roll your uh, your lefse out on. You also need a cloth to roll out on. Okay, 
So this will actually go around the board. It's got string on here so you can just tighten it up so it's not going to move. It'll actually look just like this when it's all on. I mean it's not super tight and you don't want it to be, okay? This isn't a trampoline, it's not a drum. You don't need to have it, you know, cinched down that hard. And on here, but what we're going to do is that once this is tied down, we're going to spread flour all over it. We're going to really work the flour in. And uh, we, what we want to do is we're trying to get it to where that dough is not going to stick. As you can see on the mat here, it's actually got different gradations. So you got 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. Now with my family, we like our left so thin. We always try to get out to the 14 inch line, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea of the shape because we're trying to get it as round as possible. You know, we don't want some sort of an amoeba thing that you know, happens. You know, we want a nice round shape. So that's what this is for. But even the rolling pin themselves is special. It's just not a flat rolling pin. This is the rolling pins that we use. As you can see on there, they have grooves in it. This one's actually kind of like a waffle pattern. And what happens is we actually got to take a rolling pin sock. Yes, they do make them. See, rolling pin covers. That's what you're wanting to get. You'll put that over your rolling pin. You'll actually put it on just like this one is here. And you'll also coat this with flour. Now what those grooves will do is that will hold on to the flour while you're rolling. So you work it into the material, you get it into the rolling pin down below. So when you're rolling, that flour will keep everything from sticking, okay? So that's what that is for. That's what the socks are for. That's what the cover is for. That's what the board is for. And we got it all rolled out. We're gonna take a stick. This is a lefsa stick, okay? See how thin that is? It's almost like a sword. <laughs> in fact, Grandma would always yell at uh, me and my cousins, my brother, <laughs> because we would try to sword fight with these things and she would get pissed at us for doing that. But anyway, <laughs> once everything's rolled out, you should be able to just slowly get your stick underneath. You actually pick it up and pull it back on itself and then roll it up because it's very thin and very fragile and the weight of it will actually tear the left so. So that's why you gotta roll it up on these sticks. You bring it over to a nice flat griddle and these griddles, <laughs> this is actually my grandmother's. You can see her name on that old masking tape. And these are the griddles that we put them on. Nice wide surface. This is the brand. This is actually the box that came with my grandmother's griddle, okay? So, Heritage Grill, and it's used for many different things, but if you're gonna do lefsa on the grill, you cannot put any oil on here at all, ever, okay? My mother has one of these, and she can't use it for lefsa anymore because she's cooked eggs and bacon and sausage and pancakes and stuff like that. And they're great for that kind of stuff. They really are. But if you know how to use it for lefsa, it's got to be completely oil free. Um, some of the darker spots that you see on this pan here, it's not from oil. It's actually from the lefsa itself that maybe there was a moist spot that kind of stuck to the grill. That's basically all that is. But you basically, you just take your stick and you scrape it off. You don't even really wash this stuff, okay? I don't think this pan has ever been washed. But as you can see, it's got an electrical cord. You set it eh, anywhere between 400 and 450. It kind of depends on how thick the layer, you know, the left set is and all this other stuff. Once we get it picked up, you come over, you lay, you'll have a flap of the left side coming down, you lay that on the edge and you just slowly roll it out onto the cook surface, okay? You leave it there for maybe a minute or so. You'll actually see steam coming off of it from the moisture that's still in there. And then you actually have to flip it. So you'll actually go right back under it again, you know, do the whole thing, lift it up on itself, roll it up just a little bit flip it over, roll it back out, and it will look like a tortilla. It really will. You know, you'll get the, the dark, heavy 
circles on there and then some light stuff and oh, it's just wonderful. I love left stuff. Once it's fully cooked on both sides, you know, tops four to five minutes cooking completely, okay? So, but then once the actual cooking is done, we put the lefsa on a board, okay? And this is the, that warped one. Since I can't roll on it to make the lefsa, my grandmother had made these. And it just covers the board, okay? But we'll lay our lefsa on here, and I've got one, two, three, four more of these. With this whole process, you're trying to keep thing, things as dry as possible, but when it comes to the cooling, now you want to try to save as much of that moisture as possible. Otherwise it turns into a crispy cracker and we don't want that. So we're going to lay the lefsa out on here to cool with cozies on top of it. We'll even grab some of the um, towels from the bathroom and cover them up just to really insulate them and keep them nice and warm and just, you know, cool as possible. You know, cool them down as slow as possible. <laughs> That's the whole rigmarole on how to actually cook and make lefsa. So, <laughs> and it's actually been a couple of years now since I've actually made lefsa, so I'm a little rusty on it, but I'm sure everything will be fine. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Okay, um, this is lefsa morning. I've got my, uh, all my potato mix out of the refrigerator now. Um, I've actually got it here. I actually got it in my mixer stand in here. Here, here. <clears throat> got it in my mixer right here. Uh, all the potato I got in there. Now, like I said, it kind of tightens up when it sits in the fridge. So um, what I did is as I was putting it in the bowl, I was just taking the spoon that I was dishing it out with, just kind of breaking up the big chunk and you know into smaller chunks. Also, I was taking a look at the recipe, my grandmother's recipe, and uh, it called for two cups of flour. So I measured out the two cups of flour, put it in the bowl, you know, you remember. But as I was reading the directions on how to proceed, it said add one cup of flour to the potatoes, not two. And then I was sitting there, well, that's not, that doesn't seem right. Why did I have to measure out two cups of flour? The two was actually handwritten, it wasn't typed and stuff. So what I'm thinking is that as we've been working with the with the recipe, maybe at times it was getting too wet, you know, and one cup of flour just wasn't enough. So I'm gonna start with only one cup of flour in the mix, and then I'm going to increase it if I feel it's still too, too tacky or too wet. And then uh, I'll add a little more flour, but I'm not gonna add the full two cups, not yet. I just wanna see how the one cup works, okay? All right, let's start mixing in the flour. Okay, as you can see, I got my stand mixer here. Um, I've got it down, I've got the uh, dough hook on there, not a whip, not the, uh, uh, the paddle. I've actually got the dough hook, see? Dough hook. Gonna put that in there, lock it down so it doesn't uh, pop up. But I'm going to start it on, uh, I think I put it on number two. And I'm just going to slowly add in the flour. And I'm going to start boosting the speed as soon as it's all in there. I'm going to take this off. Just got to keep on scraping down the sides. And it looks like it's starting to come together now. I can actually remember sitting there kneading the flour in by hand back when I had made this originally with my grandmother. All right, I want to stop. I want to take a look at it just to see how it's coming together. Yeah, it's still pretty wet. Okay, so I'm going to add more flour to it. Now, I don't know if it's going to take that whole second cup of flour. I have all, I've added maybe a quarter of that cup of flour. 
Okay, but I think that's starting to look pretty good. Still a little wet, but you need that. All right, now I gotta portion this out. Okay, so as I said before, this stuff is uh, pretty tacky. So I'm putting on gloves so I don't end up with a potato ball hand. That's one third of a cup. And then I'm just gonna roll it up into a little bit of a ball. About a third of a cup. Roll it in a ball. Just keep on going. So as you can see, I got an extra one. So I got a baker's dozen, 13. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them in this little pan here and uh, stick them in the refrigerator and just let them sit in there until mom comes in and we'll start uh, getting these rolled out and cooked up. It was funny, even when I would sub with the card club, <laughs> I was picking cards up and dropping them. Uh, it's so irritating. Man. Perfecto! Another one! We haven't even had to say a swear word. No. I am going to have to steal one though. Well, we got 13, so we have an extra. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take the first one we get. Okay. And we'll have to show how to fold them and how to cut them too. So. Mm -hmm. I'll put this one back. Hey Jennifer. What? Sample time. Oh, is this the one that got messed up? None of them have been messed <laughs> up. Been but messed I up. messed it up by saying I want some butter and <laughs> She messed it up, messed it up by so saying, did, damn it, I want one. <laughs> I wanted butter on it, and she just rips a chunk off and takes it away. Uh, I thought uh, you were offering me some. Well, you could have had some, but I would cut her ass. <laughs> I was just wanting a little butter on it. <laughs> butter? You need brown sugar or no, 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 no. She doesn't do that. She's, she's pretty much just a butter person. During the meal, I like dipping mine in gravy. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go, Joe. Butter. Thank you. I need a little more. I like See? my butter. Yeah. That's a lot of butter for that little piece of... Shut up. <laughs> Help yourself, Timothy. This is our go-to. Some reason, outer edge on this side just doesn't quite get the Well, that skillet's It's Norwegian. It can be as old as it wants. Well, what I'm saying is that as I was growing up, that's the only pan I ever known Grandma to have. She never went out and bought another one. She that's bought it for us kids. Oh, yeah, I know. I was telling the... Uh, the YouTube guys, how you've ruined yours because you cook bacon and sausage and pancakes on it. All the grease is now piled up onto it. I mean, it's great for that stuff. Yeah. You know, the skillets are awesome. You know, they're they're multi-purpose. But once you cook something else on here, you can't. Do it, it. Yeah, especially if it's got oil or something in it, or grease of some sort. 
You can't use it anymore. Sunday. When you start eating it, you can't put it down. One last chance. I got mine here, so this one's good too. Starting? So I think General was saying that uh, Grandma Tillotson would make left so, but she would leave hers thick. Oh, she wouldn't roll it up nearly as thin as we do ours. I would say this is almost could be thinner. <laughs> I like how you pull yours out of the stick instead of just sliding the stick underneath. Yeah, I don't want to have a hole in it. <laughs> We've had perfection. How many rounds have we done now? This is number 13. Number 13. And we haven't poked a hole. We haven't. Messed up at all. I gotta be careful. We might have to pray. Uh, oh. Damn it. So now, what you can do if, if this happens, you can actually take your stick and just cut it off like that. Make sure your stick is clean. Yeah, you gotta make sure your stick is clean because now I got potato goo on the edge. A little dry. But this is the last one, so. Now when uh, mom starts to flip this, this might stick just a little bit on the edge. Okay. All right, that's our last one. They're all tucked in the cozies to cool off for a little while. Keep them covered to keep them moist. So yeah. Don't dry out to a potato chip. Yep. Because those edges, they do dry out when you're cooking it, but once you cover it like this, those edges will soften back up. All that leftover steam and stuff in there. Nice warm blankies on them. And yep. Keep them cozy. Keep them cozy. That's why they're left so cozies. These were actually little aprons for young children to wear as they help mama and grandmas make their lessons. So um, that's, that's what I was thinking about. I don't ever remember using them no, when I was a kid. So I've never seen them. They were in grandma's bag. Can't have too many cozies. <laughs> nope. Jennifer, we're done. All right. We never had a bad one. I had to eat a good one. Yeah, it was all my fault. I'm too damn good of a roller. That's it. All washed up. See? Left's a cozy. <laughs> the uh, stuff you hear in the background, Jen is watching an old uh, sci-fi show called Babylon 5. <laughs> Some kids could take part in. Too. Yeah, this was this is what the little kids would do. They would fold it in half and and fold it in half again and then cut them apart. You know, it's like kids' craft. <laughs> so today I get to be the kid. Yep. I can still remember seeing Grandma Mellon doing this. She could have a batch of love some mixed up. Have it for supper that night. She and Grandpa always had their love <laughs> Or the homemade bread. 
Yeah, for them, it was almost like you had their daily bread, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, she made it every day. I mean, just like people down south always make biscuits. Yes. You know, for every, you know, every breakfast or something like that, they would have biscuits. Well, they would have lessa just about every day. Nothing for Grandma to make up a batch of lessa. Yeah, I remember when we would do these with the real potatoes. That batch made 24 rounds for one batch. And we would make three batches because we would be giving them to all the different families. You know, exactly. Barb would get some, Barb and Jim, and then Ray would get some. This would make good Christmas gifts. Yeah, Jenny and Ray would get some, and then... Uh, Even though they all want to make their own, they just don't well, that, and that, But that's what we did, is we sat around and we made it up for everybody. You know, but everybody was there to make it. You know, Bev was there, Jenny was there, and, and I think Jim would be there. You know, everybody would be there, so... That's it. You know, Phyllis would be there, Robin and, and all her kids were going to be there, we would be there. Alright, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on us making Lefsa. Uh, God, it's so much fun. I, I think it's actually been a couple of years since the last time we made Lefsa. So. But uh, yeah, it was fun just kind of sitting and talking with Mom and telling stories and stuff like that. Just reminds me about what we do when we were little kids, you know. We were sitting around, sharing what's been going on in our lives and, you know, just shooting the shit. But this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. See you on the road.